what is the difference between the single coated and multi coated brand new Voigtlander Ultron Sent 5 F1.9? The answer almost nothing. Stay with me until the end of the video and I'll explain in full details. Hey guys, Matt here from italaka.com. This is going to be a three part video. Part one, I'll take you to Italy and I'll show you some behind the scenes of me shooting with models similar to what I share on Patreon. I'll be a bit less geeky and a bit more about how I'm actually taking the pictures and that's with the multi-coated version of the Sen5 Ultron. Part two would be me shooting the Sen5 Ultron single coated version of the lens in Warsaw, Poland. And we're going to do a bit of street photography, travel photography. Again, nothing too geeky, just real life sample photos and what this lens can do. And then finally, part three, we're going to do multi-coated versus single coated. So you know which one of these lenses you may want to get. And you may be quite surprised by the results. Let's jump into the video. <laughs> If you missed part one, where I compare the Voigtlander Ultron 75 1.9 multi-coated to the Voigtlander Nocturne 75 1.5, I'll link that at the end of this video. Now onto Italy. One of my awesome patrons in Germany, Toby, kindly invited me to an international body painting festival near Ancona in Italy, hosted by Laura and Ehud at their villa. That gave me a chance to test this lens in various conditions with quite a few different models and different lighting setups. First up was Letitia in this amazing red dress and because of the red we decided to shoot her amongst the olive trees on green so red really pops on a green background. Here you can see a lot of the lighting that Toby kindly brought for us to use. Quite a few different setups and here we're using Godox AD600s. I was using bare bulb or through a diffuser <laughs> And I had uh, Gazi there um, assisting and I was teaching him a bit about how I was shooting. So you can see my flash just hiding behind the tree, bare bulb shooting on a sunny day. If you notice in my hand I'm holding an ND filter to underexpose the ambient light and then overexpose with flash to get the separation. There's the AD600 and there's my settings, 250th of a second ISO 50, not that lens, using a different lens and then the Godox trigger firing the AD600 flash. Here you can see my setup for this look. So I had the off camera flash to photo right. And then again, that helps give the separation of the dress and her from the background. Okay, for the next look, I took off the trigger and these are shot with ambient light only. And that means I don't need the ND filter. I was shooting with Michaela, so it's my second shoot with Michaela. You'll see this in another video. First shot to wide open at 1.9. You can see the shallow depth of field and then here I believe it's shot around 2.8 to see a bit more of the trees in the background. Here is my lighting setup. I'll put a link to these below. They're made by Manfrotto or Laserlight and they're a cross between a diffuser and a reflector. And you'll see in a second it gives really nice catch lights. Uh, again these were shot at 2.8 to see the details of the trees rather than just blurring everything. And I'll just try in different angles. Uh, again, all daylight only, and if you zoom in on the catch lights, you see the, the two reflectors there in the eyes, even though it's focused on the wrong eye. For the next look, we went in this black room which Laura and he had created, and so you'll see in a second, it's basically like you could do this in your garage if you've got like a black painted garage. There's Laura and he had on the right. And so I faced uh, Michaela towards the light to give her nice bright eyes. And then because the rest of the room is black, it gives a really nice fall off and like darker cheeks. So you'll see here, there's the light. So it's just this plastic sheet and that gives a really soft light for her face. And as you can see here, the skin and everything looks really good. And if you could do this, as I say, in your own garage, just get a plastic sheet and then stand the person in your garage. There's the back of camera to see that I don't really edit too much. Here is another shoot that I was caught in a behind the scenes photo, again using the same lens. So those are the photos from Italy. To see more from Italy, watch more videos coming up in the coming weeks and months. Next, we're gonna to head to Poland to do a bit of street photography. Okay, this is in Warsaw, Poland. And I think that tree with the blossom is probably the most photographed tree every spring in Warsaw. The amount of tourists standing there taking pictures every day was just absolutely crazy. So I went early one morning to get some bokeh shots for some bokeh testing. This is now using the single coated version of the lens shooting toward the sun to test the flare, to test the colors and to test the bokeh. 
Here's the Boca wide open at 1.9. Uh, I think it's very pleasing. Shot at 0.5 meters. And there's the Boca, I believe, at 2.8, uh, much more circular. Okay, onto the streets in the old town to test this lens at the various distances. Again, shooting the lens up close at 0.5 meters. It's really good for detail shots, as you can see here. I was doing all the touristy photos, both of the postcards and the surrounding area. Beautiful colours from the old buildings with the preset applied. As you know, I normally shoot black and white, but a combination of the blue sky and colourful buildings got me shooting in colour. I even developed my Warsaw colour preset. I'll link it below. For some photos, I found these 75mm focal lens a bit too tight and I couldn't get everything in the frame that I wanted. That said, the advantage of a longer lens means you can get some really nice compression and so I was making the most of that with the 75mm lens. I just want to stop the video for a second and say a huge thanks to my awesome patrons. We had our first meetup in London last weekend for Photo London 2023 and it was a lot of fun. Maybe I'll share some behind the scenes in future videos. To find more about Patreon, click the link below. Okay, back to the photos. As you know, I normally shoot models, so here are a few portraits shot with the single coated version of the Centify 1.9 Ultron. This is Martina that I met on the street and persuaded her to come for photos. And this is Olga from Belarus, shot inside in the apartment uh, using mirrors and various lighting setups, available light. Okay, so that was Poland. Next, probably the reason you clicked on this video, what is the difference between the single coated and the multi coated version of these lenses and which one is right for you? So here are the two lenses side by side. You've got the multi coated, which is matte black, and you've got the single coated, which is black paint. Here are test photos using both lenses to see how they compare. Single coated are all photos on the left, multi coated are photos on the right. And even if you view this on a really big screen, there is not a huge difference. <laughs> There's a very, very slightly less black blacks on the single coated, but for the most part, I really struggled to see a difference. And maybe you'll see a difference, but I think very, very slightly less saturated if you're trying to look for differences, but I really struggled to notice any difference at all other than the, the blacks. So the question then stands, which lens do you buy if the photos are almost identical? I think it depends on which camera that you're using. For me, the matte black lenses for the multi-coated version matches my M4Ps and M6, but it depends on what camera you use. The black paint shows dirt a lot more than the matte black but they both show dirt more than and dust and finger marks more than silver lenses so I found myself cleaning them a lot. Here's a view from the blockage with the hood attached. There's a very little blockage at infinity but as you go really close there is a bit more blockage. Here's the view from the blockage with the hood removed. There's almost no view from the blockage at infinity. There's a little bit at closer distances. So what is the verdict? You know I am a big Voigtlander fan aka Mr. Voigtlander. I love the close focus of the Send 5 1.9 Ultron. I love the small size. I love the light to weight. But in terms of optical performance, I think you can get better photos from other lenses. If you want a small telephoto, I'd recommend the 90 f2.8 Apo. If you want shallow depth of field portraits, I'd go for the Send 5 1.5 Nocturne, the lens I've got. And obviously if you want something wider, perhaps check out one of their 50mm lenses. If you love the 75mm focal length and you want something really small, the 75 1.9 will deliver, but I just don't think it excels in any one particular area. 
If you saw my last video on the Leica Summer Lux Centrive 1.4, the Ultron definitely falls short in the artistic department. So you're not going to get that beautiful kind of vintage bokeh from fall off from the single coated or the multi coated. Although I do have one more Centrive mirror lens to come and Yes, uh, stay tuned for that and this lens may be the one that you want to get if you're looking for something a bit more artistic. I must say a huge thanks to Flaghead Photographic for making this video possible. They'd already sent me the multi-coated version of the lens and then I said you guys have been asking for the single coated as well so it's like excuse me please can you send me the single coated so I can do multi-coated versus single coated and they're like yes no problem and hence this video. So my top pick for a Sen 5mm lens for a Leica M-Mount camera is still the Voigtlander Nocturne Send 5 1.5. see more on that lens, click this video next.